So allow me to share a little bit about physiotherapy for patients with um, sepsis. Um, the scope of my talk today is really to cover a little bit about the epidemiology of sepsis uh, relevant to physiotherapy or rehabilitation, to look at a little bit about the current literature for rehabilitation and also really the points to consider for exercise when you're um, dealing with patients with sepsis syndromes. So really, physiological responses to inflammation in addition to the presence of a suspected or proven infection present an internationally accepted definition for sepsis. And as the disease progresses, the syndromes presented are termed severe sepsis and septic shock. Now, in both the ICU and on general wards, severe sepsis survivors suffer from decreased functional status, um, worsen quality of life, increase cognitive dysfunction, and even um, sarcopenia. Not surprisingly, many such patients are discharged to long-term care facilities for physical rehabilitation with escalating utilization of resources and costs. So the incidence of severe sepsis is estimated between about 50 to 100 cases per 100,000 people of the population in developed countries. Vincent et al. in uh, 2014 here published some data showing that almost a third of the patients had sepsis during um, ICU stay. Lower occurrence rates were reported in South Asia, and the highest rates were reported in East and Southeast Asia and the Middle East. Also, crude ICU and hospital mortality rates were higher in patients admitted, admitted in ICU use in upper middle income countries. In a mortality study conducted in Australia and New Zealand, discharge to rehabilitation was found to be on an increasing trend from 2005 to 2012, as mortality was found to be on a constant decline with improving management of patients with sepsis in the ICU. But the ongoing mortality may last up to two years beyond the 28-day in-hospital mortality that we are quite familiar with, uh, with uh, decrements in quality of life in these patients over that period of time. So what about mortality with physiotherapy uh, in patients with sepsis when we do it on them? Physiotherapists routinely assess and treat patients with sepsis, and the frequency of physiotherapeutic intervention was associated with an improved outcome in this study by Sostov, uh, which was conducted in 2013. Now, in order to exclude a potential bias by the fact that patients might be too sick, especially in the first few days of a sepsis progression, uh, only septic patients with a minimum length of stay of five days with at least one physiotherapy treatment were included in this further analysis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they found that out of over 700 septic patients who received physiotherapy, about 25 who had undergone physio died, but only in comparison to about 50 who did not receive physio. So we still need prospective studies to confirm this potential favorable impact. A combination of the catabolic effects of major illness stress response, poor nutrition, systemic inflammation, immobility, result in the loss of large amounts of muscle mass. Now, this is thought to be due to the proteolysis, which manifests as septic critical care uh, weakness syndromes, and functional decline and decreased quality of life are the detrimental endpoints of sepsis, as we know. Systemic inflammatory processes can aggravate and accelerate the rate of muscle wasting in addition to the immobility associated with sepsis in early stages. Now, muscle wasting and activity intolerance occurs very early in sepsis and prolongs recovery from critical illness. There is enough evidence to suggest that specific decreases in muscle mass and muscle force occurs in sepsis syndromes, both peripheral and in respiratory muscles, caused by a variety of mechanisms. Now, any intervention that can modulate these risk factors in, uh, that result in detrimental effects of sepsis-induced myopathy will be critical to the overall management of patients presenting with sepsis. Myopathy is likely to manifest as the major feature of ICU-acquired weakness and precedes polyneuropathy in patients with critical illness neuromyopathy. In critical illness myopathy, the predominant type 2 or fast twitch muscle fibers, as we know, atrophy as seen, with, uh, as seen in muscle tissue with patchy loss of thick myosin filaments, which are visible. In contrast, the critical illness neuromyopathy is characterized by non-excitable muscle membrane, so these factors may then contribute to isoquiet weakness. Now, the loss of muscle mass and thick muscle filaments decrease muscle force 
and non-excitable muscle membrane may fail to generate any muscle contraction in patients with sepsis. So knowing all of this information, how do we apply it clinically? Um, there is preliminary evidence to suggest that early exercise can modify inflammatory biomarkers in critically ill patients. Um, what you see in the cytokine cascade, within the first few hours or two hours of sepsis in that profile, you can see that there is uh, a rise in tumor necrosis factor, interleukin-6, and interleukin-10 as well. Um, with persistent elevation of interleukin-6, it is linked to high mortality and inhibition of protein synthesis and apoptosis, which correlates with poor functional outcomes. Uh, tumor necrosis factor also is known to induce apoptic cell death, which can result in skeletal muscle wasting, and is associated with functional uh, impairment. So defining the state of inflammation when implementing exercise is quite critical. The cytokine cascade in response to sepsis and exercise is shown here, and what you can see there is in response to exercise, there is no rise in tumor necrosis factor or interleukin uh, 1, but the, it does show an increase in interleukin 6, which is followed by interleukin 10, which as we know is an anti-inflammatory marker, and uh, an increase in CRP does not happen until 8 or 12 hours later, so from this, preliminary exercise trials do suggest that we must first know if exercise can actually increase anti-inflammatory markers if administered at the correct time of the disease. What about the types of exercise and uh, what sort of the stage of the disease do you consider this? Now in sepsis, the dysfunction of microcirculatory network is a pivotal element in the pathogenesis of the disease and the development of even organ failure. But we have some evidence, mostly done by uh, Gerard Vesely in 2000 uh, and his team in 2009, to suggest that simple exercises, which is of low aerobic quality, or even electrical muscle stimulation can help preserve muscle mass as well as improve microcirculation and oxygenation. How much of this exercise is going to be safe? In order to answer that question, you probably need to understand about the oxidative stress that happens in sepsis. Now, with the advancement of physical therapy in ICU patient safety, it is important to understand if early exercise does contribute to significant, uh, significant oxidative stress and any potential for harm. The overproduction of uh, uh, free radicals can result from a variety of stresses, including physical exercise. Um, clinical practices such as suctioning, turning, and positioning in the ICU during critical has, uh, illness has been hypothesized to release reactive oxygen species, potentially aggravating cellular destruction and increasing mortality risks in this patient. So excessive free radical generation will play a pivotal role in the induction of sepsis-induced myopathy. But at present, um, the specific causes for this mechanism or to the causes for it to, to develop atrophy is not clearly known. With advancement of physical therapy in patient safety, um, we need to understand a little bit about oxidative stress. Oh, sorry, I'll just move that on. So, we also need to know um, how safe exercise is in the term of, uh, in, in the situation where patients present with hyperlactatemia. So, hyperlactemia is a marker of uh, disease severity in patients with sepsis syndromes and with clearance of lactate often impaired. Uh, if we can understand a little bit about circulating lactate, it can be used to reflect the balance between production versus clearance to indicate fluxes in oxidative metabolism for monitoring effects uh, of exercise in critically ill patients. Perhaps an easily available clinical measure would be uh, something like blood lactate, which can easily provide information on whether a particular type of exercise or a dose of exercise is harmful in early sepsis. Um, systemic inflammation also disrupts mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation, and all this happens really in the cellular level, which we are quite blinded to when we perform exercises on patients, but it's good to think about it. It may lead to mutations in mitochondrial DNA and cause multi-organ failure, and even extreme levels can, sh um, can indicate shutdown of mitochondrial activity, which can easily lead to death. So at this point, we can measure this in research, but it, it can be quite clinically difficult to establish. 
what kind of relevant physiotherapy outcomes can we use in patients with sepsis? Measuring muscle strength is going to be challenging in a septic patient who has ICU-acquired weakness. So we do know that a scoring of less than 48 of the MRC score uh, will determine that they have got ICU-acquired weakness, but that doesn't really help us in quantifying the weakness. What we can use is something like the bioimpedance spectroscopy, which is quite easily clinically available, and it can be a um, useful tool to measure fat-free mass and determine the preservation of muscle mass in patients with sepsis. And of recent interest, the skeletal muscle ultrasound is seen as a medium um, for early identification of uh, early muscle wasting in patients with sepsis. And with interventions such as electrical muscle stimulation, we can stimulate motor, motor, uh, motor points of major muscle groups to recruit these muscle fibers and keep uh, proteolysis hopefully at the bay. So what you see here basically is a, a picture of an MRI of rectus femoris. And um, if I can just point that out to you, you can see some wasting there in the rectus femoris. And you, that can be easily uh, noted through a muscle um, ultrasound, uh, a skeletal muscle ultrasound, uh, 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 showing some difference in echogenicity of the muscle. Uh, which can be quite easily used by physiotherapists before as well as after a, a short term of physiotherapy intervention. So I end with a few points just to highlight that at this point, the literature is really scarce as to what we can do uh, for physical uh, therapy in um, sepsis. But low aerobic activity or exercise or even um, electrical muscle stimulation is seen safe and uh, to administer within within or after 24 hours um, of the patients being admitted. And future research is really needed to confirm if these uh, are beneficial to the patients. Thank you.